Hi everyone. In today's discussion on the nervous system, I shall compare between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. We have learned about the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system is actually part of the peripheral nervous system. It is also known as an autonomic nervous system because it controls involuntary activities, meaning that these are activities that do not involve the thinking part of the brain. Activities such as breathing or the heart pumping are not consciously directed by the brain. They are controlled by this autonomic nervous system made up of the sympathetic nervous system or the parasympathetic nervous system. We see that this nervous system not only controls these involuntary activities but is also involved in maintaining homeostasis within the body which I will cover in another chapter. We now know that both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are involved in involuntary actions. But what do these nervous systems do individually? Now, if you look at this emoji, it is in a state of panic. So you find when we are panicking, it is actually due to the sympathetic nervous systems causing us to develop what is known as the flight or fight response. Whereas the parasympathetic nervous system is effective when we are actually in a state of calmness, okay, where we call this as being the rest and digest response. So let me go into detail about both these responses. We start with the sympathetic nervous system. So always remember, sympathetic nervous system is related to when you are in a state of panic because it wants to generate a flight or fight response. This response is important when we are faced with a threatening situation. For example, let's say the dog is chasing you. So you have two options either to run that is called flight or to fight that is to find a stick or a stone to throw at the dog so how you decide to respond is actually controlled by the sympathetic nervous system it normally will increase the rate of activity to help you survive the threatening situation for example you see your pupils of your eye will actually dilate when you are in panic. This is so that more light can enter your eyes and you can see more clearly. Then you see your salivary glands will actually be inhibited. So that's why when you are nervous, you tend to have a very dry throat or at times your voice does not want to come out. Uh, this is because of the sympathetic nervous system. Other factors are such as your respiratory system. You need more oxygen if you are going to run. Okay, So the bronchi of your respiratory system will dilate so that more oxygen is inhaled for aerobic activity. Your heart also will start pumping at a higher rate. So that's why you see your heart will start beating faster. This is so that more oxygenated blood is transported to your muscles and your brain. You find that your digestive system, of course, will be inhibited. So that is why when you are under stress, you normally miss your meals. You do not feel hungry. Okay? And if we are not hungry, where do we get our glucose for aerobic respiration to occur? You see, your liver will actually start to do glycogenolysis, okay, where it will stimulate glucose production so that 
your muscle and brain can carry out aerobic respiration to respond to the threatening situation. Finally, even your bladder okay, is affected by the sympathetic nervous system where it will inhibit contraction of the bladder muscles so you will actually not pass urine when you are in a state of panic. Now, the nervous system, of course, the sympathetic nervous system okay, is also found in other organs too. I just chose a few organs to share with you to help you understand what is involved during a flight or fight response that is controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. Let's move next to the parasympathetic nervous system. This will involve the rest and digest response. As you can see, my emoji is resting and having a nice hot cup of coffee to digest. So the parasympathetic nervous system is necessary for non-threatening situations that involve normal body functions. So what this parasympathetic nervous system does is it will reduce the rate of activity. So let me use the examples of the organs I used earlier. So like the pupil of the eye, when influenced by the parasympathetic nervous system will constrict to reduce the amount of light that enters. So this is what will slowly let us calm down and go to sleep. At the same time, the salivary gland will be stimulated to produce more saliva, mainly for the digestion process. The respiratory system and the cardiovascular system also will slow down where the bronchus will begin to constrict to its normal size so that our breathing rate comes to normal and we do not need so much oxygen. So the heartbeat rate also will reduce. Okay, so there will be less oxygen pumped to less, not to say less, but normal amounts of oxygen pumped to the uh, muscles and brain. Then we have the digest part in this response. So naturally, your digestive system will be stimulated to synthesize all necessary enzymes. So you tend to feel hungry under the influence of the parasympathetic nervous system. And now, since you are getting enough glucose from the food that you are consuming, your liver will not necessarily uh, produce glucose anymore, but instead will be stimulated to synthesize bile, which is necessary for the digestion of lipid-soluble molecules. And finally, even the bladder will be stimulated to contract, so it is more easy to pass urine when at rest. So now you can make a general understanding that the sympathetic nervous system will increase the rate of activity while the parasympathetic nervous system will reduce the rate of activity. Now that we know the function, let's see their distribution. This autonomic nervous system will emerge from specific regions of this spinal cord. The regions in the spinal cord can be divided into the cranial region, cervical region, thoracic region, lumbar region, and the sacral region. So we find that the parasympathetic nervous systems originate from the cranial region and the sacral region. Whereas, the sympathetic nervous system originates from the thoracic region and the lumbar region. The cervical region does not have an autonomic nerve. Okay, so now let's look at the nerves that are originating from the spinal cord. I'm going to use this simplified diagram to explain the neurons that exit the spinal cord and enter the organ. The connection between the spinal cord and the organ will involve many nerves, but I just use two nerves for simple discussion. Now, previously we have learned that when one neuron meets another neuron, 
the junction at which they meet is called the synapse. And when one neuron meets the muscle, then that junction is known as the neuromuscular junction. But when we are talking about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, it is not only going to involve two nerves like this. It is going to involve many nerves. So the place where these nerves meet are called the ganglion. So the nerve that is before the ganglion is called the free ganglionic neuron. And the nerve that is after the ganglion is known as the post ganglionic neuron. So to explain the difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, I'm going to simplify this diagram further by using lines like this. So the yellow line will be the preganglionic neuron and the red line will be the postganglionic neuron and the place where these two symbols meet will represent the ganglion. So let's look at the distribution of the nerves in each of these nervous system. We start with the sympathetic nervous system. Here is the spinal cord and I'll use the heart as the organ. Earlier I've introduced that the sympathetic nervous system originates from either the lumbar region of the spinal cord or the thoracic region of the spinal cord. And you can see here the preganglionic neuron is very short. The postganglionic neuron is much longer and it ends at the heart, more specifically here at the sinoatrial node. So from here you can compare that the preganglionic fiber is shorter compared to the postganglionic fiber, which is longer. The reason for this is because the ganglion is located closer to the spinal cord. Now compare this with the parasympathetic nervous system. In the parasympathetic nervous system, we learned earlier that it can originate either from the cranial region or the sacral region. I use the cranial region and you can see very clearly here that the preganglionic neuron is extremely long as compared to the postganglionic neuron that is very short. So the comparison is preganglionic fiber is longer than the postganglionic fiber. And the reason for this is because here the ganglion is closer to the organ. Now this is not the only difference between the two nervous systems. Let me go to the next difference. Let's look at my final difference between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The diagram here shows the synaptic knob. Okay, and here is the post-synaptic membrane. So we are going to discuss about the neurotransmitters released by either nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system releases neurotransmitters in the form of norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline. So you find this neurotransmitter actually stimulates the um, organs to carry out activities at a higher rate. In contrast, the parasympathetic nervous system uh, uses the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So we can conclude that acetylcholine is necessary to maintain the rate of uh, organ activity at a normal rate. So with that, I conclude the comparison between both sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Let's go have a break. Let's rest and digest and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.